And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Kamisama, which is a really pretty game from Colossal Games. And in this game, it's a strategy game set in rural Japan during the Edo period, says the back of the box. And two to four players are going to be the Kami, which are spirits of the land, and you're trying to get the favor because you want to be Kamisama, the chief spirit of the land. Well, of course, why would you not want to be that? So this is a game in which you're going to be building shrines all throughout the area. Here's how it plays. Kamisama is made up of three years, and in each year is going to be made up of four seasons. One person will have this red marker uh, in front of them and his blue marker, and after everyone takes a, a turn, then the board is rotated one, and then it'll be rotated another, then it'll be rotated another, then it'll be rotated again, and that's the end of the year. Then this marker moves here, and this goes over here. Whoever has the blue marker in front of them will go first each round, and you'll be working in the village directly in front of you. Each player is going to get a spirit. There are different spirits here with a backstory to tell you about them, and all different spirits, and there's the face of the moon, and oh, scary girl! Ah! All right, and so sometimes they come with like special tokens. So this one comes with a fear token, and you have a fear track on this board here. So there's that. So you're going to pick which one you're going to start with. So let's say I'll start with the ancient grove in front of me. Each player is also going to get a bunch of uh, these buildings of their color, depending on the number of players. And you'll get some action cubes. You'll have three action cubes the first year. But as you can see, you'll get a fourth and a fifth action cube in years two and three. And by the way, here's where we keep track of your score. Each player also on their board is going to have some tokens these uh, that are going to keep track of your favor and nature. And at the end of each year, whichever one of these is lower is how many victory points you will score. So you want to move them both up, but you want to move them up kind of equally. So on a player's turn, when it's their turn, remember you're only working in the village in front of you, you're going to use your action cubes to take actions. Everyone can add or remove in the current village. So in your village here, there's different spots on the board, and I'll be able to place a shrine there, or if someone else's shrine is there, I could remove it. Now when you place a shrine, if you place it in a field, you'll get two favor. If you place it in a forest, you'll get two nature. If you place it in the temple, you'll get one favor or one nature. But why would you place them anywhere? Well, also, I might look at the goal card. There's going to be a different goal card each year. And this one says control three spaces in this pattern. So I might want to do that so that I can get a token which matches the current village. There's different villages. The village that we're currently looking in is the agricultural village, the, the village, the farming village. Then we have the wealthy village, the fishing village, and the holy village. And each of them comes with a token. These tokens at the end of the game are going to be worth one point. But if you ever get one of each type, you can turn them in and score six victory points. So some of the actions can be adding or removing things in the village. Each person also has some special abilities, including one that costs two of your action cubes. So let's take a look here at the mox here. This says, um, you start the game with four seed tokens. After you add a shrine to a forest in your current village, you can add a seed token to a hut or stilt house in any village. Seeds are not considered shrines, but may be removed as though they were shrines. So you can put these seeds in uh, different spots in the board, and you get the little tokens that match them. So I can replace all seed tokens with shrines in any one village. That's an action. And gain a favor in each for each seed token replaced. Or I can remove a seed token in a village to remove up to two adjacent shrines. Or replace an opponent's shrine with a seed token in any village. So his is all about manipulating seed tokens around. Waihala here, uh, she can add shrines. Or she, whenever you add a shrine to a field, she gets a nature. So add shrines to two adjacent huts or stilled houses in your current village. Choose an opponent. They can add a shrine to a field in any village or gain a favor. So she's helping uh, other people out but helping herself more. That's kind of her special ability. And so players are going to take their turns. Everyone around the table will take their turn working in the village. And then, like I said, it all rotates. And now you're going to work in the next village in front of you. Now, at the end of a year, you're going to see who has the most influence in each village. So let's say, for example, 
the village here had a bunch of different houses in this village. And you can basically put these shrines all over the place. But what we're looking for is you're looking for the longest connected grouping. So in this case, it's pretty easy. It's orange because orange has three. If there was a tie, let's say that blue also had three over here like this, then whoever is in the temple is going to break the tie, even if not part of the tie. So when that happens, then whoever has the most influence in that village will draw cards from that deck equal to the number of players. So uh, this is the farming village. So I take the farming one. I'll draw these cards. So let's say it's a four-player game. Four cards. I'm going to pick one of these. Oh, this guy gives me two favors. This guy gives me one favor, one nature. I can lose a favor to get two nature or the reverse. Add or replace a shrine in a field in this village. Hmm. And I could complete a goal if that works out. So I'm, I'm going to pick one and then pass it, and each person's going to get one. But also I get to keep these because at the end of the game, as you can see, they're worth victory points. And there's all sorts of them in here. In fact, there's peasants that are simply just worth half a victory point that aren't nearly as good as the rest of them, but sometimes that's all you're going to get. So you want to have influence so that you can get these. And that's it. After three years, you will add the victory points from the different people that you got from the different villages, plus a point for each of these extra tokens that you've accumulated over the course of the game, and plus the points that you've gotten during the game from favor and nature and other ways. And whoever has the most points is the winner. The components in this game are mostly good. I have not that many complaints about them, especially the main board here itself, which is a puzzle board. But I really do like how there's indentations here to put the different shrines in them. And so I place the shrines on here and they stay in. And that's good, especially with the board rotating. Uh, so that's very positive. And as you, know, as you can see here, the different shrines all have a different look to them. So that's pretty cool too. And the artwork on the board and on the cards and everything is stunning. Now, one problem the game does have is is which village is this? I'll give you a hint. It's the rich village. How do I know that? Because there's a little coin right there. I wish there was an easier way to tell them apart. We kept messing up which village was which. You know, the cards are like, well, here's the rich village. Well, again, that just wasn't as, you know, easy to tell. The only one we could always remember off the top of our head was the fishing village because there was water there. But I, I kind of wish that the colors were a little bit pointed in that direction. Like I said, the art on the cards is good. The quality of the cards is good. It's very easy to read the cards. Um, the characters are pretty neat, and I like that they have their own backstory in the back explaining what that character does. So there's also a bunch of cards. I mean, there's way more gold cards than you'll ever need in this game. There's a bunch of cards included if you're playing with two players, like you have a third player who's messing you up and moving things around to make that so that there's more fighting on the board. The one component I do not like is the favor and nature tokens. These are these two little tokens that you move. They are not, they're super small. And they honestly look like something you would throw away from a game. I wish there was nicer tokens. Even cubes, I think, would have been better than these. But that's my only complaint. Other than that, it looks real pretty. So there's a lot of good here. The art, the way the game looks. Again, it's a game that people will walk by and be like, huh, what is that? Because it just looks nice. There's the asymmetrical powers of the different spirits. So that's interesting. We'll come back to that in a bit. And then there's the rotation of the board in the middle where it's going to rotate around, which seems like it'd be annoying, right? Rotating a board. But it's a circular board. It doesn't seem to knock stuff over very much. And all the pieces are held in. I'll tell you what, if that board did not have those recessed places to put the shrines, pff, I'd be out because they would fall over every time you rotate it. As it is, they seem to do okay. So you rotate the board, and so that's kind of a, an, an interesting idea. It's an area control game, and you're putting out these shrines. You want to put them in fields and forests to get those immediate influence bonuses, but at the same time, you also want to have that connected chain. At the same time, you're trying to meet the goals on these cards to get things like this one here. Control one temple and two fields and a forest. Control four squares and a tetra-shaped pattern. Um, control three hut squares, or whatever it is. Um, so, and you can only work on the one that's right in front of you unless you have a special power that lets you mess with something, another village. So you're working on this and then you won't see that village again. And that's kind of a, an interesting idea, right? And, and, in, and in theory, it sounds fun and you're putting these out and there's a lot of cool concepts in the game. In reality, 
there's a couple problems I have with the game. I think the game is fine. I don't dislike it. But there's a couple things that make me not necessarily want to play it often again. One is the game really slogs in that third year. In the third year, almost all the shrines are on the board. So you're spending your actions basically removing other people's shrines to then put your own in those areas. At the beginning, it's wide open, and then there's that conflict. But the conflict isn't interesting that much. It's more of a, you're in my spot, get out. I'm putting myself in. And the game can have a bit of a take that flavor to it. I mean, it definitely has that flavor to it. But it can be kind of annoying when it seems like everyone at the table is picking on you. Not because they hate you. Well, maybe it is. But <laughs> for most people, probably not. But just because you happen to get in their way and you can feel like, wow, I just got beat up three times in a row. And that's not as necessarily fun. Now, that's kind of the territory when it comes to an area control game. But it's that slogging which kind of has me, eh. And then the asymmetrical powers. I'm sorry. I really think the spirits, some of them are just more fun to play than others. I won't argue that they are equally strategic. I don't know. I would have to play a whole lot more to be able to determine that. And I'm assuming the designers and developers made them fairly balanced. But some are just a lot more fun than others. Some, you know, are like, ooh, there's more ways to move stuff around. Others are like, you get the fear track. You get these, that seed token one, that's really, it just feels cool to be that person. And a couple of the other ones are a little more boring to me than the rest. Overall, though, it's interesting. It doesn't feel the same as everything else that's out there. There's a rotating board and you're putting uh, shrines out or taking them off. I don't know if that's enough to make it come above everything else. There's that whole, you know, the cards at the end of the, at the end of the year for each of the villages, and that feels okay. You're, you know, especially when you're last, you could, and you get it. You're like, ooh, uh, um, I got one of these peasants, which is worth half a victory point. That's not as exciting. It, it almost feels like there's a couple more actions needed in the game. I don't know. It's okay. I know that's not the kind of uh, review that people want to hear necessarily with Kami Sama, but it's a pretty okay. And I think some people will like it more than myself. I just felt like after two years, it felt like the game fit pretty good there. And then I was like, oh, there's a third year. And it felt like the game was just a little too long with that third year. And that's what I think of Kami Sama. Dice Tower of Judgment, a little long, but fun. <laughs>